Focus is brought to you by Envision Financial, where achieving your goals starts with the right advice and financial tools to help you thrive. Welcome to another episode of Women in Focus. Our Women in Focus today is another amazing person who is a curator who works in uh, Vancouver Art Gallery and something about art rental. Ah, but we will ask her about that as we introduce her. Her name is Jazz Lali and she is our Woman in Focus today. Jazz, you're most welcome in our program. How are you doing? I'm really well. So nice to be here, Sushmaji. <laughs> You have such a cute baby face. Has anybody ever told you that? A few people have said that, <laughs> yes. I think it's my curly hair. <laughs> so were you born with uh, yep, full, very curly hair? Yeah, full black, dark, curly hair, bouncy, bouncy every moment of my life. <laughs> and they are really jet black. They are. Isn't yes. that interesting? Majority of the people have either a little bit of a um, brown, Dark brown, dark brown perhaps, in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but no, this is full on dark black. So where are your parents from? Um, my mom and dad are from Punjab. And you were born here? Yep, first generation Canadian. Wow, yep. how was it? Um, it was very fun growing up, I have to say. Um, mom and dad were very liberal in the sense that they gave my brother and I um, all the fun activities that we could imagine, you know, ice skating, soccer, gymnastics, right. um, um, and also traveling, which I found to be quite unique. My dad and I are similar in that sense that we love to travel. Um, <laughs> and so it was great and um, just an introduction to everything that was possible, um, but also founded in um, my culture as well. You know, there were moments that we would go, we would go to the Godwara, we would go to all the Visaki parades and celebrations as well and anchored in family. Isn't right? that beautiful? It was. So, um, big family, small family? I would say an average size family. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Indian average size family is, is about 50 people. Yeah. <laughs> That's it, actually. I would say the same. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? I mean, you know, growing up within a family. Exactly. You, you don't need, you learn everything that you need to. Yep. To, uh, to fit in, in the world when exactly. you are working, right? Those fundamentals of being um, nice to everyone, right? Yes. Being kind and sharing. Those are always ingrained um, in me through my parents and through the aspect of family, right? And always being happy as well and positive. Being positive has been um, a really great gift I think my family has given me. Isn't that just lovely? You said you and your brother. Yes. So there are just two of you? Just the two of us. He is older? Oh, no, one year younger. Oh, so you're the older one. I am the eldest, yes. Okay. <laughs> now, growing up in a household where mom and dad are so liberal uh, and allowing you to, you Ex know, experience. Yep and express who I want to be right. to a certain extent, obviously, but there's always been that freedom of um, do what you like to do. Your education in particular is important to us, you know, first generation um, Canadian here. So that was always in depth in, into us to be education is important. So, you know, that's what you're gonna make, that's what's gonna, you're gonna become who you are through right. this um, element of education. Um, and they didn't want for us to do anything that we didn't want to do because right. that was our life and that's where we were going to be headed and how we're going to support ourselves <laughs> and so from an early age they knew that I, w I was always creative and expressive always making little arts and crafts projects <laughs> and showing my mom um i have to say that my brother is completely the opposite is he it? went towards the accounting more side right. right and i'm in the arts which is very opposite <laughs> But I was given the opportunity to say that, you know, do what and you want to do. And that. Exactly. So I started, um, you know, from an early age in high school, even my high school teacher, art teacher, recognized that I really wanted to do this. And so mm -hmm. she started to help me find experiences in the arts. And she is my mentor now, right? Isn't that just beautiful? When, when you find a, a mentor, yeah. either they are your teachers or somebody in the family that encourages you. Yes. So what aspect of art is such a huge, vast landscape, is. isn't it? So if you want to bring it down to your experience what is it that attracted you to art actually it's quite simple when i was in college yeah. i took an art history class and i retained all the information and i was like 
what is happening here? <laughs> um, this is the only class that I really enjoy going to and wow. learning about and writing the papers and wanting to learn more and more and more. It's like a sponge, right? And so that's how it started actually. Yeah, from being encouraged in high school, um, being the first that I was the youngest um, art history council member wow. um, in high school, um, all throughout grade 10 to 12, and then in college finding that, oh wow, I really like what I'm learning and I want to pursue this, and having the family support to say, okay, you can you know, go into art history if that's what you want to do. So for our listeners, art history. Yes. History is history, and then art history is the history of art? Quite simply, that's it, yeah. Um, I was really fortunate in my education that um, the art history education that I had, it was actually social art history. So we uh -huh. didn't just look at the historical aspects, we looked at everything around that period. For example, the economic, the political, the fashion history, what was popular, wow. music and entertainment at that time, to really form a holistic picture about how this artwork was created and what was influencing the artist. You know, was it a war? Was there like the Industrial Revolution, for example, right? Mm. That changed aspects of art history. So which period is your most favorite? So I wouldn't say I, I really enjoy studying all of art, <laughs> but I specialized in 19th century art, so the 1800s um, wow. in France and England. And so that's where most of my work came my, my, where my passion came from was in that aspect of art history. Art. Now, you know, um, a photograph yes. is a true depiction of a person's body, face and everything. An artist has the liberty to draw differently, like Da Vinci did something totally different, Van Gogh did something totally different. Michelangelo, yeah. Michelangelo did yeah. something totally different. Michelangelo's paintings and Da Vinci's paintings are, you know, uh, poles apart. Exactly. And I think that's the most fascinating part about art history is no matter what picture you look at and who the um, observer is, they're always going to have their own interpretation from their own life experiences and what sort of background information that they have about art. And I also think then the most beautiful part is going to see something that is so different and then reading the exhibition labels or the booklets or the brochures and then coming back with this renewed interest, right? And understanding about what they've just looked at, whether it be something traditional to something completely abstract like a Picasso painting, right. you know, contemporary art. Yeah, which is a lot, it's hard for some people to understand what it is I know. without that background or just a little bit of education about why was Picasso or anybody in that era making such interesting work that doesn't look so real. Right, yeah. and very surreal. Exactly. I want to talk a little bit more about that, but let's take a short break sure. and come back. Very interesting, Isn't Jazz. It? Yes. Jazz is our woman in focus today, don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Women in Focus. Chaz Lali is our Woman in Focus today. The word, your last name, where does it come from? Lali, hmm. uh, Punjab. Very I'm, Punjabi. Yep, I'm thinking maybe Lalinga was a ah. pinned, right? Oh, that's why, Lali. Yeah, yeah. Lali so, with a Y. With a Y? Yeah. Not with an I? Not with an I. <laughs> <laughs> and, and why, why not I? I don't know, I guess <laughs> when my great-grandfather first came over, that's how they decided to put it, with a Y and not an I. So your great-grandfather came here? Yes. So your dad was born here? Uh, no, 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 back and forth, right? So yes. he okay. brought the family over, and then my mom's family actually was here first. Oh, I see. And that's how my, and then went back to India to marry my dad, and that's right. how my dad's family also came. Isn't that just beautiful? Now people who are immigrants here have made this country exactly their hard work and all oh, that yes. and um, all south asian families are very hard working families and i find that uh, their children are the ones who are you know taking the the community even further ahead in towards prosperity and all that yeah. when you talk about art and mom and dad are interested in you doing or pursuing this. What aspect of it is, I, I know you talked about art history. How did you get involved with Vancouver Art Gallery? Oh. Because your relationship with them goes back it quite does. a bit. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. Um, quite simply put, knowing that I wanted to go into art history yeah. and then my mom and my dad uh, relating from 
their cousins who were born here and grew up in the education system here said that experience is very important. Mm. You know, if you want to become a doctor or a nurse or anything in, in any pursue any profession, experience it first by volunteering. Mm -hmm. So that's what I started doing. I started volunteering at the Vancouver Art Gallery in ah. 2005 with encouragement of my mentor from high school right. and my parents and my cousins, my, my aunts and uncles. Um, and so that's how I started in 2005. I was started at the Vancouver Art Gallery. In 2006, I got hired. I liked what I was doing. I was in visitor services, so at the front line, um, helping customers come through the gallery and helping them navigate through right. the exhibitions as well. Okay, now that is amazing. So you got into Vancouver Art Gallery and they showcase some really amazing artists, some that are very contemporary, some that are very traditional, traditional yeah. right? And local, national yeah. and international artists. So for me, who was still like wanting to pursue art history was amazing. That was a great uh, footing in the door to say, right? To mm. learn about what was happening there in the arts community and where it was going and how I could find my place in that. Um, and that's partially the reason after finishing at UBC, I decided to go um, get my master's in art history to pursue wow. further education. And I went to the University of Birmingham to a small um, gallery, or a small space there. Right. Um, it was the Barber Institute of Fine Art where I was really engaging one-on-one -on -one with art, learning like how to wow. research, um, describe the didactics, put the showcase, put the artwork together, um, and then how to give the tours, right? And how to speak about the work. And that was a really, really great experience and educational experience as well for Lovely. me. Lovely. So, so a master in that. Yes. That is amazing. I mean, you know, so your entire life has been learning yep. and experiencing, eating, dreaming and experiencing art. Yes, it has been. Yeah. And quite right to say that I am an art historian. So I study art. If someone <laughs> asks me to make a painting or a drawing, it's not the best. That's not where my um, talent lies. Right. Yeah. Your talent is in, in seeing what makes them tick, right? Yes. And also then um, sharing my personal experiences and my passion about art history and exhibitions and art with other people so it gets them excited as well. Now you have uh, seen artwork done by our community. Yes. Uh, some, of, some of the artwork is just amazing. It is. And, and uh, I don't want I don't want a number uh, as to who's the best and all that <laughs> but I do want you to tell me who do you think is that you have met that you find very encouraging. Of course, no, and this is where um, we were speaking earlier, where now I am navigating um, my career and where I would like to support um, is young South Asian artists. Just this summer, I was lucky enough to be the curator um, for the mural project at Punjabi Market through the Punjabi Market wow. Regeneration Collective and yes. Vancouver Mural Fest. And for that project, I had to research South Asian artists in Vancouver um, to be part of the showing there and I was so excited and ecstatic to learn about so many new artists that I'd never come across because my education was more Western mm. um, and traditional history as well, right? So to learn about these young South Asian artists, I was so grateful and so uh, I know Sandeep Johal, you've yes. spoken with her, she's fabulous and doing such great work in breaking those barriers in our community for women being right. painters as well and to having an art career, right? Um, and Gandaj Deep Singh, he's also an amazing young painter, a more wow. realistic work. Um, and then we have Jag Nagra as well, who is doing such amazing work in illustration um, and bringing forward her work through the Canucks, for example. I'm sure you saw the Diwali yes. sweaters that she designed as well. So these are all young, some very small sampling of young artists in our local community yeah. who are engaging with the arts and bringing it forward to our community, but in great ways that are accessible as well and um, help our community to understand what art is, that it's not just a painting, it can be a wide variety of things. There's so many great talented people right now doing such great work and making it more aware. I think that's also where it lies, right? There's education of art as well, but also if you have a little bit of awareness and a little bit of interest, who knows how far that can go. We are talking to a very intelligent young woman. Her name is Jazz Lully, and she is our woman in focus today. We're going to take a short break and come back. Of course. We'll be right back.
Women in Focus is brought to you by Envision Financial, where achieving your goals starts with the right advice and financial tools to help you thrive. Welcome back to Women in Focus. Our Women in Focus today is Ms. Lali. So jazz, uh, jazz must be short for something else. It is. What is it? Uh, jazz Kiran. Jazz Kiran? Yes. Okay. So Jazz Kiran Lali. Okay, Jazz Kiran, um, talking about art and different form of art and different period of art. In Vancouver Art Gallery, there is Art Rental. What does that mean? Oh. So Art Rentals and Sales yeah. um, is a great department in the Vancouver Art Gallery that supports local BC-based artists and emerging artists. Okay. So artists can apply to become part of the program. Um, um, every year in April, there's a call for submissions, so you right. can apply. Um, um, uh, the submissions goes to a jury, and a jury selects up to five to seven artists to be in the program. Wow. Yeah, so your work is um, consigned to art rentals and sales, and then um, people from the community, from businesses, film, TV companies, can rent or purchase um, original artworks. And the program wow. is fantastic in that it has a wide variety of work, so you can get a traditional landscape to anything more contemporary, like a photograph or an abstract painting, and the prices are really accessible. Mm -hmm. um, rental for artwork starts as low as twenty dollars, twenty-five dollars a month, and it goes a up month. A month, and it goes to like uh, two hundred dollars a month. And right. the policy of the program is, if you're renting an artwork and you decide to purchase it, because usually, um, you know, after three months, you know if you like the piece or not. Yes. We can credit you up to three months of rental fees towards the purchase. Oh, that is just amazing. It's really a way to have art brought into your home to try it. There's no stress mm. about buying it. And and you can take it home with you, put it on your wall and see if you like it. And if you don't like it, you can come back and return it to us and, and pick out something else. Right. Um, or keep it or, and buy it eventually if so you like So how many as well. pieces do you have for? There's over a um, thousand. Like, yeah, wow. we have we have 112 artists in the program. Wow. Um, and emerging artists and some established artists from Vancouver and BC, so all around. So when you go to a, um, a corporate office and yes. you see this huge big painting out there, do you think that's from? It possibly could be. Yes. Yes, it could be, yeah. And I think that's great how um, local communities and corporate businesses, they want to have an original artwork, but they also want to support the that's artists right. in the community as well, right? So. Um, so when um, so does the Vancouver Art Gallery buy that stuff? So the Art Rentals and Sales Program, um, which is part of the gallery, but the right. two collections are separate. Right. For the Art Rentals and Sales Program, the work the artists can sign their work to us, so I we we, uh, we take care of it. Um, yeah. We do the business of renting or selling. Yeah. And actually, the last two years, it's been fantastic to see how much. Um, film and TV productions have come to us and um, supported the young artists in our program and now like their work is on the TV. Isn't that just lovely? Yes. So South Asian artists and then Aboriginal artists, yes. now their artwork is mind-blowing. It is, no, and the, the when you look at the work, you understand, you know, they're coming from all these lived experiences that some other artists might not have, and, and the passion that they put into and the emotion that goes into their work is amazing, and there's usually a story or a narrative behind their work as well. So, for example, um, Sandeep Johal is one of our artists, and so you can come to Art Rentals and Sales and rent um, one of our works. I, I actually encourage all your viewers to come and make an appointment to see the wide selection of work. And you know, when you're in a space that has so much work, we have 28, uh, 20 walls that you pull out, and there's artwork on wow. both sides. Wow. So you really like fully immersed in artwork when you're there. Isn't that just beautiful? I mean, I can just imagine. I. Uh, in our household, our mother was a very good artist. Oh, right. My sister is a very good artist. Um, my son is a very good artist. You know, so so brother is a good artist. So I am not a good artist. I'm just a broadcaster. You have your own creative <laughs> form, Jashmaji. <laughs> <laughs> but it is uh, very encouraging to yes. see that your department would encourage young artists. Yes. I, I I wanted to ask you about um, the artwork that is surreal right and that's real okay okay now i know it is i find and it's my personal view that the surreal art is easier to draw than the real art uh, for me to draw a face 
it's going to be so difficult. It's like, I can't be a photograph. I can't take a photograph of you and, and, and just paint it. But for me to abstractly draw a, an eye here or, or a nose there, that's more easy. Is that a right statement? No, I would, I, I would think so, yeah. So the more surreal artwork comes from this like abstracted moment of just capturing the elements, right? Whereas a realist painting that looks like the actual thing has a bit more, um, takes more time and yes. dedication, right? But both artworks have this emotion, you know, the abstract work captures maybe like this more quick flux movement, and then that realist painting has a more deeper connection to the viewer because the painter is spending so much time with the sitter and engaging with like every detail of their face. Wow, wow, yes. So if you think in those terms, it does make sense. It does. Wow, where do you see yourself in the next five years? <laughs> Um, I see myself here continuing on in my career and, and endeavors of supporting local emerging artists in any which way I can and um, speaking about work and educating people about artwork as well, whether it's realist or surreal. Would you go to India and find their art because their art is also different? I would love to, yes. And in fact, um, when we were talking about discoveries earlier, um, I've come almost, I've come full circle now and accepting, you know, more of my culture uh -huh. and wanting to support my culture. So one of the cool things that I'm going to be doing um, come in the new year is at the Vancouver Art Gallery, we'll be doing, I'll be doing tours in English and Punjabi. So, Punjabi? Yes. Wow. Uh, Yes. Okay. So in fact, um, the Vancouver Art Gallery had a one program, Art Connects, last yes. April during Sikh History Month. It was in Punjabi, and my colleague and I um, spoke about Emily Carr, um, a wow. great um, painter in Canada and yes. well-known in BC as well as a female painter of um, the yes. natural landscape. Yeah, so I'm really excited that I'll and be able to... And that's going to happen next year? Uh, yep. Yeah, look forward to the new year. Check back at the Vancouver Art Gallery's website, So um, and you'll be able to come with me on a tour of an exhibition and I'll be speaking Punjabi, which I'm very proud of, that I'm able to provide and give back to my community in such a way. That is beautiful. All the more power to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a woman in focus today. I think I've really enjoyed it and thank you for being the woman in focus, Smarji. <laughs> uh, Jazz Lali has been our woman in focus today. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Women in Focus is brought to you by Envision Financial, where achieving your goals starts with the right advice and financial tools to help you thrive.